Ontario Sniper is a sniper flash game made by Tanaka Yu. Because it's a flash game, you can play it at Flashpoint. It works just fine without any problems. Now, let's go on to the story. There isn't much, but you'll soon know why. You control a girl named Iris through some levels, shooting barrels, bottles, targets, and defusing a live explosive. We will get back to this later. You can really see that this is a flash game because of the pixelation. There are things that look very out of place. Like how is this bomb on the side of the building? Iris's scope has a different quality than her rifle and other more trivial stuff. It isn't really game breaking, you can easily mind past them. Seeing Iris shoot, pull the bolt, concentrate, and run out of breath is a nice and cute addition. She also reacts to what is happening. If you miss a shot, or if you mess up, then she will look disappointed. Neat. It's random, but she will also wear different costumes when you enter a level. From gothic lolita to military outfits and more, it also flutters depending on the wind condition. Because this is a flash game, expect some FPS drop. If this keeps happening to you, then just lower the graphic settings and you should be good. Music wise, there are some banger songs, but since there are very few of them, I'm not gonna talk about it that much. This game only has one sound slider, so you can't really turn off the music and leave the sound effects, which is a real pain to record and edit with. So, if there are any game developers watching, please add different options for music and sound effects. It's just something to make the game more convenient to play and record with. Now on to the gameplay and the levels. First level acts as a tutorial. It will teach you the controls, and that's pretty much it. You fire with the mouse one button, reload with the R key, focus with the space key, and zoom out with the shift key. Input wise, there isn't much to talk about. Now how about the shooting part? If you hit a bullseye, it's a critical, and if not, but still hit the target, then it's just a hit. If you shoot a rifle in this game, you shoot a rifle. It's as if you feel the recoil from the game. The screen moves along with the crosshair to the recoil. A flash and smoke can be seen from Iris's rifle. And by god, the sound effect. If you didn't turn off or turn down the volume when playing, then you might experience hearing loss after playing because the sound effects are very loud. Now, if you combine the recoil, the flash, and the sound effects, then you will have a really satisfying feeling when shooting. shot just feels really powerful and I really love this part of the game. For the second level, you shoot some moving glass targets. So, to hit the target, you must know what target you are dealing with and get the horizontal velocity vector of the target and the bullet travel time before it hits the target. After that, Using some physics calculations and adjusting your aim to anticipate where the target will be when you pull the trigger and land a direct hit. With that, you can now get a critical hit. Or you can just use this type of scope and use the guide. 
Now, it's really easy to hit them. For now. In the third level, using your sniper rifle, you must defuse a bomb. Yeah, this game just went to 100 real quick. It's a fairly good level with a tense last stage. I won't spoil it that much, because experiencing it for the first time is better than me showing it to you. This level and pretty much all of them are repetitive because it just doesn't change anything each time you play. I get that the game is mission based, but at least a change in position or just something that can add randomness can reduce the repetitiveness of the level. After finishing levels, you will get some credit points. You can spend this on skills, scopes, guns, and home location. The skills are not that much interesting, since you can pretty much find these on other sniper games. It's just a simple magazine capacity, reload speed, reducing muzzle jump, and more. It's a fairly normal, but okay addition for the scopes. Although, I think that it's nice that you can choose whatever scope you like. However, I think most scopes are useless, in my opinion. Like why use this scope, when this scope is simple and can do the job just fine. I think making some scopes fit a mission niche can be a good addition. For example, there is a mission where you have to shoot something through a thick fog, and so you will need a thermal scope to see the target. You know something that has a use instead of just a PNG. But I guess in the end, this is just all based on preferences. For the rifle, I don't know why, but I just can't feel the bonuses. It says here plus concentration, but it doesn't feel that different from other rifle. I think it would be better if the changes were much more drastic. For example, some guns have a higher penetration, so shooting this red blast target would only take one or two hits, but the gun can only shoot five bullets before reloading or a rifle that has a fast bullet speed, but has a low penetration. This would make each gun unique, and fit a niche a mission might need, rather than the same rifle with small or even no bonuses at all. Other than changing the sound effects, it's not really that important. For the home, it's the same thing with the rifle, with a bonus that you can feel, but it does change the main menu music, so there's that. Now, after you finish a level of normal difficulty, you will unlock the hard difficulty and the very hard difficulty if you beat the hard difficulty. The hard difficulty introduces a wind mechanic where your bullet gets swayed in what direction the wind is moving and how hard it will sway. Now shooting a moving target with the wind hindering you is a great challenge. That constant change of wind will make you change your calculations based on the situation. Even if the levels are the same each time you play it, the wind mechanic can really spice up the level. As for the very hard difficulty, the wind is much stronger and changes more often. It also changes the time to either sunset or sunrise. It doesn't really hinder you, unless you play the third level, in which the color filter will drown out the red target indicator. If you equip a night vision scope, an alternate version of the level will be playable. It's literally just the same level, but darker. But if you want to play the very hard difficulty, it won't show the orange filter, so that's something you might want. But to be honest, it's just really plain. 
Now, for my biggest criticism of the game. There is not enough content. It's literally unfinished. The game is labeled as a test game. That's why there is no story. There are only four levels, and a lot of the contents are either unfinished or not working. With the lack of content, this game would get really boring after an hour or so. It's such a shame, because what the game currently offers is a fun and enjoyable experience. If expanded more, it could become a really great game. There might be some stuff that was planned, but sadly, there is no development for this game in the last decade. But still, for a test game, it's a blast to play. I had more fun playing this game than other finished sniper flash games. So, if you are into sniper games or want to try a casual sniper game that will accompany you for some minutes, then I recommend Material Sniper. Well, that's it for the Material Sniper review. There is actually a game inspired by this called Heroine of the Sniper, but I haven't played it yet, so it might be in a future video. Also, if you are curious, the developer Tanaka Yu is still around. He even got a job in Zy Games, but I don't know what he's up to. I have updated my Google spreadsheet, so you can now comment on some games I should check out. I'll try to check your suggestions out, and if it interests me, then I'll add it to the spreadsheet, but no promises. That's all for today, and see you next time.